issue that has been kept secret until now. There are so many surprising things in the book, but the thing that surprised me the most, that I actually had to reread it right. because I said, is this true? Right. Was that in 2016, you and Will decided that you were going to live completely separate lives. Yes. It was not a divorce on paper, right. but it was a divorce. divorce. So from the year 2016, which is seven years ago now. <laughs> yes. Y'all have been apart. Yeah. I just don't understand why she thinks it's necessary for her to keep exposing her family secrets. Let's just be honest. Jada hasn't really been relevant since The Matrix. Every time she thinks she can get a little 15 minutes of fame or make some money from a book or a TV show, she throw her family right under the bus. So now you telling us that you and Will were separated since 2016. So when he walked on that stage and slapped another man, he wasn't even slapping cheeks. And then she had the nerve to throw him under the bus after that situation too. Jada Pinkett Smith has a brand new book out and a deeply coordinated PR our blitz this morning with excerpts from the book and a new exclusive TV interview and she shares her side of the slap story and her side she thought it was a skit too I thought this is a skit I was like there's no way that will hit him it wasn't until will started to walk back to his chair that I even realized it wasn't a skit in her book Jada writes I'm unclear on the reason Will is so upset. You don't know why he was so angry. That's not what you're supposed to say. Now, I believe that he was wrong, but he walked on that stage and tried to defend her honor. She's supposed to have his back, at least. Imagine somebody's harassing your girlfriend and you walk up to him and knock him the fuck out. You punch him in the face so hard his ears touch. They call the police on you, and when the police get there, your girlfriend tells them, I don't know why he's so angry. That's not what you're supposed to say, bro. You're supposed to lie. You're supposed to tell them anything but that. I was scared. I was embarrassed. I was in fear for my life. You're supposed to have my back. If you my girl and I'm trying to defend your honor and you tell the police that, you next. She is hell bent on humiliating this man for profit. When Will Smith wished her a happy birthday on Instagram, this is what she did in response. Will Smith with a lovely happy birthday post, man. Happy birthday, Mamita. I've been to 28 of your birthdays. Don't know if we can top the one with Rock Kim. And just for her to respond with the most diabolical birthday post I've ever seen in my entire life. She posts Tupac. She posts a video of her and Tupac singing Parents Don't Understand by Will Smith as a show of love of, hey, happy birthday to me. Thanks, Will. This is crazy. Our three lives would be intertwined. Hey, bro, come on now, dawg. Come on, man. Not in a million years, I imagine three lives, three fates would be so intertwined. They're not. You just making them intertwined because you being you and you should stop. It's like, let it go. Let it go. Will, I don't, I don't know how you be doing it, Will. I'm just saying, that looked like true happiness to me. Will, it's not too late. I don't think Margot got nobody. But man, you, you seem happy right here. You don't gotta put yourself through this no more. You Me personally, I wouldn't take this level of disrespect. And I don't know what goes on behind closed doors, and I'm not saying Will Smith is perfect, but this is not how you handle situations. Everybody knows that couple that gets into an argument, and then they go on Facebook and expose all their secrets. This is that couple, except they're doing it in front of the entire world. She continues to humiliate this man who devoted his life to her by confessing her love for another man that never even really liked her. Once, once you paid attention to him, he kind of sucked you in. Um, and we hit it off. Crack is cheap. And I'm tired of her always talking about Tupac with her. Tupac wouldn't have with her. Tupac wouldn't have with her. I'm tired of that story. It, it, it never went down. Oh, Tupac. I know Tupac. Tupac wouldn't have been with you. Man, Tupac had her in the friend zone. If Tupac liked her so much, why was he engaged to another woman when he passed away? She was engaged to this man, and you don't hear her endlessly talking about him for clout. Were you ever jealous of the love Jada had for Tupac? Uh, oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say no. Oh my God, that dude. Let me, like, and you know, and that was in the, that was in the early days. Yeah. That was in the early days. And it was like, um, that's a, that was a big regret for me too. Cause I could never, um, I could never open up to interact with, with Pac, mm -hmm. you know? And cause we had a little bit of a thing, right? Because, you know, um, you know, they grew up together 
and you know they loved each other but they never had that you know they never had a, a sexual relationship, relationship yeah. but they had come into that age where now that was a possibility and then jada was with me you know so you know Pac had a little thing on that um but she just loved him like he was the image of perfection but she was with the fresh prince if jesus can't save these hoes why are you trying what make you think you greater than jesus nigga? did did tupac i know you are alive someplace i think my mommy really misses you can you please come back can you come back so me and my mommy can be happy i wish you were here i really do willow Tupac got killed in what, 95, 96? Willow never met Tupac. Why does your daughter know so much about a man that she's never even met? She manipulated her daughter into writing a letter about Tupac. She manipulated her son by sleeping with her son's friend. She manipulated her son's friend by sleeping with him when he was going through a tough time. And she continues to humiliate her husband in the public eye. It's going to be a no for me, dog. Do you know how embarrassing it is to have a man that pops bottles at the club? That's embarrassing. But you are the same girls that joined the section. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Yes. So you've never been in a section? Huh? You've never been in a section? Don't say that. You heard me. Gotcha, bitch. Premise. Like, where, how do you explain that? I can where, explain where, that. Where, where, yeah, can yeah. I elaborate on that? Please, please. There's a great book. It's actually written by a woman. It's called How to Play Hardball Like a Man. It explains that the way female children and male children evolve drills in hierarchy. When boys are at unstructured play, meaning they get to go play whatever game they want at recess in primary school, boys play games that require hierarchy. Team sports like football, basketball, you have a position with a clear defined role. There's a captain of the team, someone above you. And there's a such thing as winning. And when you win or lose, it establishes a hierarchy or an imbalance, which boys respect. Conversely, when girls receive unstructured play, they play games that do not require sophisticated teams. They'll play hopscotch. Well, how do you win at hopscotch? You don't. It's not about winning. They play house. They play dolls. How do you win at dolls? You don't win. It's not about winning. It's about the communal experience with one another. And all of the games that they play are egalitarian, meaning there's no hierarchy. There's no hierarchy in hopscotch. There's no hierarchy in playing dolls. And here's the difference between male and female children when observed at play. In a natural state, boys will come to a conflict and they'll say, okay, you know, jump ball, throw the ball up. We'll, we'll resolve it that way. They can move the game along. When girls are observed and they have a disagreement at play, you know what they do? They team up. They stop playing. They oh. end the game hmm. because it's all about the relationship. And if we're not feeling happy about each other. And that just makes sense. There's also a difference between how boys and girls play with dolls. When boys play with the action figure, when boys play with an action figure, they become the action figure. So if they have a Superman action figure, he's flying all over the room. If they have a Batman action figure, they try to become Batman. When girls play with action figures, they don't become the action figure. They make the doll or the action figure turn into what they want it to be. So now instead of Superman flying all over the room, he's just in a Barbie house. That isn't to say anything bad about how boys and girls play. I just think that it's interesting that if they're allowed to do whatever they want to do, they generally choose to do different things. Let me know in the comments below if this video was a dub. URL and give me the HBO special. That's a help brother out special. Hit the like and the subscribe button for more content. Till next time.